G'day. Today we're doing a repair on a Ford F350 with the, what is it, a 7.3 litre turbo diesel. And he's come in believing there's a transmission sluggish issue. On further inspection, it looks like, to me, it looks like the air filter's probably blocked as well. You can see it's got this little dust um, gauge there. What happens when the filter gets blocked, it actually pulls that valve across. The way to test it, basically you just press it and you can see it's pulled it back, back across. When we start it, it should pull that straight across and that indicates that the air filter is blocked. see that just gradually it pulled it over and you can see where that little red mark is that's what that means that the air filters block now I've got the air filter disconnected you can see it's just loose there so it's not sucking through the filter anymore or through here when it's blocked it's just sucking through there yep start her up Give it a rev. It's a lot, running a lot quieter already. Probably got to do with the turbo or something along those lines. So we'll just replace it off. We'll just replace this air filter and do a transmission service on it. give this one a bit of a clean. You can see this one will have the deep pan or the deep filter with the snorkel in it. The four speed ones are these are the E40Ds or the 4R100 transmissions or the five speed ones have got the 5R110W um, transmission in it. The pan gaskets are very similar, if not the same, on both four speed and five speed, as well as the filters that's got the shallow pan or the deep pan. So we'll just let the oil out of the transmission on the drain plug there after we've cleaned it around that pan rail nicely, blown it out. Now it's got a little bit of a red tinge, but it is pretty dark. Okay, we've got the pan off. You can see the solenoid block there. And they do have a couple of different types of blocks there. Um, the, the plug at the top of the transmission is slightly different so you can't mix it up and get the wrong one in there. And you'll notice that the filter's not there. It actually dropped straight out. So there's another little issue there if, it was, if that seal there was a bit loose. Um, that's going to suck a little bit of air, if, especially if you're going around corners. They do have a fairly deep pan, so they take a fair bit of oil. Now what people usually do is they just do an oil change on these. They just drain the oil out, put some fresh fluid in there, and away you go. But I'll show you now, in the bottom here, there's actually a magnet in there. You can see how contaminated that magnet is. It's covered in rubbish. What happens once that magnet becomes covered in that rubbish, it doesn't work anymore. So the next place that all that rubbish will get attracted to are in the solenoids, in the solenoid block. And that's a unit that actually controls all the shifts and the pressures in the transmission. So it's always a good idea to take the pan off and the idea is to replace the filter and to clean that magnet and any other rubbish that's floating around in the bottom. Quite often 
There are little nooks and crannies that are designed to catch that sort of rubbish. But you can see it's important to remove the pan so you can clean that magnet. If you can, it's a good idea to also add magnets if you, if you can. Just make sure they're not in the way of anything if you are fitting extra magnets in. Now for those transmissions you can get these filter stay fast clips. They're about, I don't know, 16 18 dollars or so to purchase them what you can do is do what i do i just make a little bracket myself 16 mil or 6 mil hole quarter inch and the gap basically from that edge there to where or well, from from there where it bolts to the valve body to there is about 25 to 27 mil it's not critical the idea is for this to support the back of the filter so it can't pop out because it's just hanging where the neck is. There we go. That's what it looks like. You can shape that there, just tap it with a, a hammer just so that bracket can't twist around on the bolt. But the idea is like that. You can see there's a little bit of movement there, tiny little bit. But that's going to support this end of the filter because there is a little bit of movement there because they have the snorkel so that filter can actually drop out this end if it hasn't got this bracket just another little tweak easy to make not that critical there you go that's not going to move anywhere can't move up and down but it it is free to wiggle a little bit like that. Okay, we've got the pan nice and Mickey Schmick. Instead of putting the magnet where it was, just sitting flat there, we'll probably put it on, on an angle like that. As long as it's out of the way of the snorkel here. And you'll notice that you have much more surface area of the magnet working. When it's up flush against the pan, the bottom, the whole bottom side doesn't work or can't work. So just another little tip. Pan's back on. Good idea to give all your unis Defoil level, a check, tail shaft, support bearing, and a good look underneath if there's anything obviously uh, worn or broken or needs attention. We're going to put the Tritec full synthetic fluid in this because he does a little bit of towing hard work with it but you can use the Dextron 3 in this particular vehicle as well as recommended by the Tritec website. Alright, we've got about 8 litres in. Very difficult to see on here. Sometimes you might need to turn the ignition off just so you don't get that splashing on the dipstick. You've got to make sure that the transmission's at operating temperature and at the correct oil level. Anyway, I hope that's helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Throw me a beer if I deserve one. Thank you for watching.